Hey everyone, uh, I want to welcome you to the latest edition of Mathematics for the Impatient. I'm here with Stan and today we are talking about the momentous and all-important topic of NFTs. Um, so Stan, uh, let's just start kind of in the beginning. How do you create an NFT on the blockchain? Yes, Marcus, this is kind of a super interesting question and uh, I had so many people asking me on Twitter to talk a little bit about NFTs because it's such a like hot subject. And there are many actually surprising things we're going to cover today about how NFTs actually work. I'm going to start with just saying that uh, NFTs are a big, big thing and everyone is creating NFTs. And uh, you know, some NFTs are, are like pieces of Picasso painting or some other really, really important piece of art that are probably gonna be there forever. And some NFTs are really transient things like a hit song or you know, your favorite game or something like that, where it's kind of existed in the moment and probably not gonna exist like 10 years from now or 20 years from now, but now it's really hot. So in general, NFTs from people's perspective are pieces of this virtual universe where we live. And one of the things that was always unfair about this virtual universe is that in the physical universe, if you have something, you will always continue having it. If you have a stone or you have a piece of jewelry, you will always have this piece of jewelry or stone. Now, if you have a photo on Facebook, at any moment, Facebook can go ahead and remove this photo. So people who live in this virtual world, they were treated unfairly in a sense that even if you own something, you may actually wake up and find out you don't have it. Blockchain actually solved this problem. Blockchain actually provides the same guarantee that you have in a physical world. It provides the same guarantee in a virtual world. So in a blockchain, if you have an NFT, if you have a virtual object, the blockchain guarantees you that this virtual object will exist for a long, long time. And that's really what people want. They want to have this feeling of ownership. They want to have this feeling of independence that their objects are not just owned by a particular company or a particular organization. They exist on blockchain and by copying your object into many, many, many copies, the blockchain guarantees you that the object will actually exist for a long time. Now, in reality, the way it's implemented on Ethereum compatible blockchains, and most of NFTs are actually existing on Ethereum compatible blockchains, it's implemented using uh, SU probably badging, Solidity programming language. And in Solidity, it's really simple. Let's take an example of a tweet. If you remember, there was this first ever tweet that Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, tweeted, and then he sold this tweet as, a, as an, an, an NFT. Uh, this tweet is just uh, the actual text of the tweet, whatever it is. And then you add to the, to the text of the tweet, you add the address, the Ethereum address of the owner of the wallet that actually owns this tweet. And then if you want to change the owner, the only thing which needs to be changed uh, is just this address. So essentially an NFT is a pair. The first thing in the pair is the actual object, the actual virtual object. And this particular example is a tweet. And the second piece of the pair is the address, that's the address of the owner of this, of this tweet. And then mathematically what happens if you say, if you say, Marcos, if you want to pass this or ownership of this NFT to me, what happens on blockchain is really simple. The record is changed. And then suddenly instead of your address, it's my address. And now I'm the owner of this tweet. Very simple. That is very cool. So I think maybe if we could dive um, a little bit more in, in, into NFTs, you know, we, we talked about NFTs being representative of, of, of media, right? Like an image. So where does that actual, where is that actual image stored? Can you go into a little more depth in that? No, that's a great question, Marcos. And it's a little bit of a complication. For the tweet, it was really simple. The way we explained it was that the actual text of the tweet is on the blockchain. 
and the actual address of the tweet is on the blockchain. Well, if you would like to put a Picasso painting on Ethereum blockchain, guess what? The painting will actually take lots of bytes. You know, a minimum image nowadays is probably going to be at least one megabyte. And putting one megabyte on Ethereum blockchain is really expensive. It's not so expensive on scale. In, in fact, it may actually be free on scale. But on, on Ethereum mainnet, it's actually expensive to put one megabyte of data on, on the blockchain. So people were trying to find this workarounds. And unfortunately, they were just putting the, just a URL, a link or to the image to the, on the blockchain. And then the actual image people would usually put just on a centralized server. There could be a centralized server running somewhere. You would put an image on it. And then on the blockchain, you would just put a link to this image which kind of defies the purpose of NFT, because if the centralized server is later not backed up or something bad happens to it or someone powers it down, your NFT will actually disappear. So that was the problem that we actually were thinking about at scale. And the way the scale blockchain works, we ex extended Ethereum virtual machine exactly for this purpose. We added to be able to store images and music and videos to Ethereum blockchain. So if you store your NFTs on scale, guess what? You don't store the link. You actually store the actual image. And you can go to any of the nodes of, of uh, scale blockchain and actually directly through your browser, you will be able to actually see your image. Or if, if it's a music, you'll be able to, to listen to your music. Or if it's video, you'll watch the video. So on scale, the actual bytes of NFT, whether it's video or image or music, are actually stored on blockchain. And then your NFT is fully on blockchain. You can sleep at night and be sure that your NFT is safe. That's very cool. Uh, so that kind of gets us to the next question, which I think is a logical question, which is, you know, how do you transfer NFTs from one chain to another, or you know, or you know, to for, say, for instance, sell it? And I think you know, a, another kind of follow-on to that question would be, what are the fundamental differences between transferring NFTs across chains versus transferring cryptocurrencies across chains? It's a great question, Marcus. And actually, there's lots of, if you read Twitter, lots of people are discussing this now on Twitter, discussing it on new, new groups on Reddit. Uh, there are several really interesting things about NFTs. First, as we just discussed, there will be many, many, many NFTs potentially. Probably as soon as next year, we'll have billions of NFTs generated. Just think how many people are in the world and just think that pretty much any object can be turned into NFT. It could be a family image. It could be the sports team you love. It could be music, anything, right? So having like we have almost 10 billion people in this world, it's almost guaranteed to be generating billions of NFTs per year. And then the question becomes, how do we transfer and store those NFTs? So first of all, it becomes totally clear with NFTs that you need to have many, many, many blockchains. Remember that we discussed that at scale, we have this uh, vision that there will be many blockchains. And with NFTs, you know, if you just think about billions of objects generated per year, you, you clearly understand that you need to have many blockchains to store all of those things. So first of all, it confirms the vision we have at scale for actually having many, many, many blockchains. The second thing, uh, actually transferring NFT to Ethereum main mainnet becomes you know, not, not so really realistic because imagine you have a billion NFTs. Even if you store, if, if you transfer some of them to Ethereum mainnet, it will be only a very limited uh, quantity. It may be if you, if you have a Picasso painting or you have some important piece of music such as, you know, like Led Zeppelin or Rolling Stones, whatever, you know, audit, audio file. Maybe you can store this on Ethereum mainnet, but that's gonna be very limited. For most of NFTs, just mathematically, it just becomes impossible to store them on the Ethereum mainnet. So you will need to have many, many chains, such as scale blockchain to store NFTs. And then there is a fundamental difference that I would like to discuss about transferring NFTs versus transferring money. Let's say you have $1 billion in $1 bills on one blockchain, and you want to transfer this $1 billion to another blockchain, right? 
Then guess what? You have one billion dollars in one uh, one billion dollars in one dollar bills. You can just glue all of them together because of mathematics. You can add money, right? So if you add one billion of one one dollar bills, you have one billion dollars, and you have one single chunk, and you can transfer it. So transferring cryptocurrency is actually effective because you can take many small pieces, you glue them together into a large piece and just becomes one single transaction. If you transfer this money from one blockchain to another, that's effective. For NFTs, unfortunately, it's impossible to glue them together, right? Let's say you have one, one billion tiny NFTs. Maybe there are, these are some of these fourth memorabilia, maybe some personal images, whatever. You can't really take 1 billion images and like glue them together to create a huge image. It doesn't work like that because images are all different. They're all different art. They're not composable like this. That's actually why they're called NFTs, non-fungible tokens, because you can't really like stick them together. They're all very unique. So because NFTs are very unique, you cannot just glue them into a single chunk and transfer them. So transferring NFTs is actually a much harder problem than transferring money. And because of that, because of this fundamental difference between NFTs and money, and because transferring money is easier than transferring NFTs, what's going to probably happen in the universe is that NFTs will stay on their corresponding blockchains and money will transfer it to, NF to NFTs. As an example, let's say I have an NFT and I would like to, uh, to sell it to you, Marcos. What's gonna happen is that you're gonna transfer money to the blockchain where I actually have my NFT and you'll buy uh, my NFT from me on this blockchain. So we're gonna see this vision of the world where NFTs are gonna be much harder to move. They're gonna be images or music and videos. And once created, frankly, on a particular blockchain, they'll probably stay on this blockchain and then you'll be able to watch them or see them or, or, or view them from the same blockchain. And then if someone wants to sell them, probably money will actually come to this blockchain and money will be used to actually sell this particular piece of art or NFT or maybe loan this or maybe do some other more complex De DeFi application, applications operations. So, so DeFi applications, DeFi apps, money will actually go to all different blockchains and on those blockchains will be NFTs and NFTs will be hard to move and all of the decentralized finance applications will actually happen on different blockchains. So if there's a particular DeFi application, it will have clones, copies on many, many, many blockchains. And then we come to this notion from the world where there is internet of blockchains and on each of those blockchains, there could be different NFTs. And then if financial operations need to be performed with these NFTs, for the most part, uh, money will actually go to those chains and, NFT, and NFTs won't move. In some cases, you actually can move an NFT if you really want. The, the way you do it, you freeze it on a particular blockchain and you create a clone it on a different blockchain. But what we expect is that these operations will probably not happen frequently because NFTs are very actually heavy objects. What's gonna happen probably is that there will be NFTs, many, many blockchains, people actually viewing and using those NFTs and ultimately money coming to those chains and being used to sell, loan, and do all kinds of other financial operations on those NFTs. Very cool. So I think that's a pretty good basic understanding of NFTs. Um, thanks, Stan. Uh, I want to encourage you guys to uh, go and follow us on Twitter. It's at Scale Network. We also are on Telegram and Discord. You can go to our website, scale.network. All this is below. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you have questions, you can even sometimes post them in the in, in the comments below this video and we'll try and uh, try and get to them. Stan, thanks for, for doing this. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Marcus.